Hello, I'm Stuart Jackson, and I work as a family counselor. What that means is that I focus on the web of relationships that we all live in. The relationships of being a partner, a husband, wife, significant other, uh, maybe a parent, maybe a pet owner. Uh, all of us have mothers, fathers, some living, some not. Uh, and we are embedded in this network of relationships. And it's very complex how those relationships have helped shape us and pattern us to different emotional responses. We all know that some things that trigger us tend to destabilize our relationships and other events happen that tend to stabilize and calm down relationships. Well, I'm motivated to offer these little video chats by one of my family members, and also by the extraordinary work of Dr. Murray Bowen, who over the course of his life in discovered family systems theory, later known as Bowen theory. Bowen theory is not a prescription of how people should act in families. Rather, it's a description of how people do act in families. And one of the things that he was particularly aware of and others have become aware of is how there are certain emotional triggers that stabilize or destabilize the family. Doing all the research it seems that there are four that are the most common in families. And I'm going to bring out my graphics department here and ask them, oh, there they are. And these are the four that seem to be the most important and most often expressed triggers of emotionality in families. They are attention, approval, expectation, and sensitivity to distress. Now, all of us have experienced some of these, I'm sure, and we could talk a long time about them, but I just want to raise up one today, and that is attention. Inadequate attention from members of your family or significant others uh, is associated with rejection, panic, a sense of emotional isolation, uh, distress. Uh, when you're experiencing adequate attention from those who are significant to you, those are associated with feelings of being calm and connected, being a part of something, and uh, a reduction in the f fight or flight uh, syndromes that we all have experienced. One of the things that we can do in our families that's within our control is to focus on what am I paying attention to? How is my attention these days? What am I paying attention to? How do I pay attention? When do I pay attention? Uh, to whom am I paying attention? All of those questions are food for thought in this time of pandemic when family life is probably more intense. Now, it was probably 20 years ago that a uh, executive at IBM came up with a notion called CPA. That is, we are all experiencing continuous partial attention. And that that seems to be a part of modern life. We're not just paying attention to one thing anymore. We're constantly focusing on our TV or our phone or our uh, or a book or a, a person or it, our attention's all over the place. Maybe that's why in 2015 they researchers had discovered that the average person in the United States, oh, from 2000 to 2015, their length of attention 
uh, their attention span had dropped from 12 seconds to 8 seconds. What that means is that we have a shorter attention span than a goldfish. Okay, are you still with me? How am I doing with attention? What am I paying attention to? What helps me to pay attention? I can't pay attention to everything. How do I turn things off? The shortening of attention span is connected to, they think, uh, the many screens that we use. People check their phones so many times an hour that it constantly keeps us stirred up that maybe we're missing something. Well, in a relationship like a family or a marriage, the quality and the quantity of attention is a key aspect of helping to stabilize or destabilize the relationship. I hope you are having attention paid to you, that you have someone that listens to you, um, thinks well of you, and I hope you're doing the same because we all need that right now. So be well, be safe, and pay attention.